Today's scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12 from the Common English Bible Translation. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I didn't come preaching God's secrets to you like I was an expert in speech or wisdom. I had made up my mind not to think about anything while I was with you except Jesus Christ and to preach him as crucified. I stood in front of you with weakness, fear, and a lot of shaking. My message and my preaching weren't presented with convincing wise words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit and of power. I did this so that your faith might not depend on the wisdom of people, but on the power of God. What we say is wisdom to people who are mature. It isn't a wisdom that comes from the present day or from today's leaders who are being reduced to nothing. We talk about God's wisdom, which has been hidden as a secret. God determined this wisdom in advance, before time began, for our glory. It is a wisdom that none of the present-day rulers have understood, because if they did understand it, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. But this is precisely what is written. God has prepared things for those who love him that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, or that haven't crossed the mind of any human being. God has revealed these things to us through the Spirit. The Spirit searches everything including the depths of God. Who knows a person's depths except their own spirit that lives in them? In the same way, no one has known the depths of God except God's spirit. We haven't received the world's spirit, but God's spirit, so that we can know the things given to us by God. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. We must become born again and recapture that moment when we first opened our eyes for how much larger life would be if we could ourselves become smaller. For the greater a man is, the smaller he begins to see himself. We open our eyes to the world around us, lost in the beauty of it, surprised by it all surprised at our own existence. Every color has in it a bold quality. As of choice, the red of a garden rose is not only decisive, but dramatic. We look and discover patterns, a repetition as if someone was saying the same thing over and over. The stars bent upon being understood. A fairy tale, alive, every morning, as if someone was saying, rise, rise again, one more time. And rivers and streams and falls all running with water, as if by some heavenly choice, all of the recurrence creating an enchanting encore of life. And in the midst of it all, a miracle, the miracle of humanity. must be something more heartbreaking than any music and more breathtaking than any art. As if this was magic. And if this was magic, there must be a magician, a grandfather who wakes us every morning and designs over and over, pleased with each iteration, designs a new dandelion, a new leaf, and a new life. No, contempt and boredom must be a mistake. We must invoke the most wild imagination, the imagination to see what is truly there, for it is here, on our knees, at this grand smallness, that we begin to see the beauty of it all. This is where worship begins, in the humility of wonder. The youth in my family, and probably most of you, have picked up on that I am not the best oral speech giver. If that didn't tell you something right then by the use of my language. I am, I am not the best, nor actually very good in my opinion, um, nor do I have a lot of wisdom. Any of you have a lot more wisdom than I do, have lived more life, have learned a lot more. Um, and that's what Paul is saying to the Corinthians, like, hey, I, 
he actually did have a lot of knowledge. He was a master of his trade, so to speak, because he was a Pharisee. Um, and so he was a, a religious elite. And he, he talks to the Corinthians and says, I'm not going to use any of that knowledge that I've gained. I'm going to use two things. The first was I'm going to use just my belief in Jesus as a person. The historical figure, the person who spoke to large crowds, the person who got large crowds to follow him. And then the second thing is Jesus as a crucified person for all of our sins. That's all he's going to use. And it made me think about our mastery of knowledge. You see, I'm normally a heart person. I like to talk about, like, opening your heart to God and making your heart soft um, so that God can come in. But today we're talking about knowledge, which is a little um, unsettling to me in the first place because Knowledge is something that we all have and we all hope to obtain more. Our problem with the knowledge that we use is that we want to become masters of that knowledge. Right? So I, I was looking at in Webster because I like to know what I'm talking about most of the time. And um, the definition of mastery, there are four. The authority of a master, so dominion, the upper hand in a contest or competition, superiority, possession or display of great skill or technique, and the last one, skill or knowledge that makes one master of a subject, command. And so although in our society we would, many of us would say, yeah, let's have more of that, and I'm not necessarily disagreeing, but I think that Paul uses this time to say, hold up, pause. Okay, you can be a master of all those things, but what is the first? What comes before that? And I love us, me included, but I don't think that we're doing a great job with our communication of Jesus. Now we do some we do some good stuff here and there. And I believe our hearts are in it, but maybe our communication lacks. You see when I'm involved in conversations or I overhear, heaven forbid anyone eavesdrop. No one does that. Okay. Um I hear some conversations or I see our social media posts or our news, and I think, man, we're a lot more worried about the competition. Whether I am right or wrong, whether I know more than you, or whether I can just beat you down until you just stop, which means I win. And we do this in every single context available. We do it, obviously, I'm just going to throw it out there, politics, different types of religion, the color of the sky, the best kind of car, you name it, we would like to compete for it. Whether we are a master of knowledge for those things. But my question, one of my questions to you guys is why? Why do we feel like we have to be mastery? Now, I go to seminary, so I'm throwing myself under this bus. I feel like I need to have a mastery level of things also. Why do we feel like we need to compete? That our knowledge has to be the best knowledge and the right knowledge. Is it 
to be masters of ourselves, masters of our own opinions or the opinions of someone else's, or is it control? Now, I know most of you would say, I let God be in control of my life. And I like to say that too. But I don't know if we do a great job with letting him be in control of our lives. You see, we get so much stuck in our heads and, and wanting to know more that sometimes we get focused on what we know and we only search to keep that answer going. I think Paul is calling us out of our comfort zones, and I probably use that um, phrase just a little too much, but I will tell you three facts about me. I feel like I'm an adventurer, to, so to speak. I love to be outside. I love nature. Um, I love to an extent, I'm not a thrill seeker really, but to an extent, stepping outside my comfort zone, seeing where I can go. Hmm. But I am also a Christian. So I believe that God has things that are not revealed to us yet. Thirdly, I believe in the power of growth, both spiritually and scientifically. So if I know these things about me, and I'm assuming you can identify with at least one of those for you, where does that leave my brain going all the time? If we believe these certain things about ourselves, where is our adventure? So here's another question. When was the last time you experienced something new with your senses? So five senses. When's the last time you experienced something new with them? And new can be something old, that you haven't felt in a really long time. Or completely new. So last night, I am out at 9 o'clock at night at Dollar General. Not where I wanted to be. <laughs> Number one, I needed a new thermometer because mine decided to quit, I guess. And so I go to Dollar General, and I'm kind of irritated. I'm not going to lie. Who wants to be at Dollar General at 9? And I walk out being irritated, and I feel the wind, and, it's, and I breathe it in, and it's a crisp wind that rejuvenates like my blood. We've all felt wind before, but when's the last time you've touched it? When's the last time that you felt it blow against the hair on your arm. Where's your new adventure if all you're thinking about in your mind is the things that you already know, the things that you've already felt, the things that you've already done? And if you're all consumed with those things in your mind, then where is the room for the Holy Spirit to penetrate your mind? You see, Paul, he says something, and, and, and at the first I missed it, but he said, I chose only to talk Jesus and Jesus crucified. I chose. I could have talked about everything else that I know, all my other experiences. But I chose just those two things. And with choosing just two few things, there was room in his mind and in his heart and in his soul 
for the Holy Spirit to speak through him. We are here today because of that. When I was working for a senior housing agency in Springfield a few years ago, um, I was in marketing, which is not my thing. And, um, but we had to meet every, every day down in the lobby. And um, we had to recite our mission statement. There were 10, 10 parts to it. And one part has really stuck out to me for the rest, for, since then. And it goes like this. I choose to have a childlike sense of humor and be fascinated, not frustrated. I choose to have a childlike sense of humor and be fascinated, not frustrated. It means that the next time you want to show others your mastery level of knowledge, that you look at them and yourself and wonder, why am I getting frustrated that they don't understand what I'm saying? And why don't they understand what I'm saying? And why do they feel this way? And why do they believe this way? And why are they doing this? It's a fascination with people because humanity is amazing. I choose to have a childlike sense of humor and be fascinated with humanity and our thoughts and our actions and the way we communicate and not let it make me frustrated. We state in the United Methodist Church that we have open minds, open doors, open hearts. Yet, as individuals, sometimes we are still stuck in the things that we know. Where is our sense of adventure? Our sense of letting some of the things that we know, parking it at the door, and say, God, see where you're taking me next. It's like a back roading, which if you live close to here, I hope you know what that is. It's a country road where you don't know where you're going exactly. Just on for the ride. Letting go of the maps, maybe the time, maybe your technology to see where the adventure takes you. Living in the mystery is a beautiful gift. But we have to choose to be there. And like Paul, sometimes that looks like anxiousness and trembling and fear because society shows us that We like to be in control. It is humbling to wonder. To wonder about others and about creation and about why we're here. So in just a couple minutes, or a couple seconds, I'm going to play this video again. And this is going to make some of you already uncomfortable because A, you've seen it before, and B, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and listen to the words. And when you walk away from this video, I hope you find something that you believe you are mastery or obtaining mastery level knowledge in and park it for the week just to see where the spirit will fall and, f- and fall in. So here in just a second, if you guys will close your eyes and take a listen. We must become born again. 
and recapture that moment when we first opened our eyes for how much larger life would be if we could ourselves become smaller. For the greater a man is, the smaller he begins to see himself. We open our eyes to the world around us, lost in the beauty of it, surprised by it all, surprised at our own existence. Every color has in it a bold quality, as of choice, the red of a garden rose is not only decisive, but dramatic. We look and discover patterns, a repetition as if someone was saying the same thing over and over. The stars bent upon being understood. A fairy tale, alive, every morning, as if someone was saying, rise, rise again, do it one more time. And rivers and streams and falls all running with water, as if by some heavenly choice, all of the recurrence creating an enchanting encore of life. And in the midst of it all, a miracle, the miracle of humanity. A mere man on two legs must be something more heartbreaking than any music and more breathtaking than any art. As if this was magic. And if this was magic, there must be a magician, a grandfather who wakes us every morning and designs over and over, pleased with each iteration, designs a new dandelion, a new leaf, and a new life. No, contempt and boredom must be a mistake. We must invoke the most wild imagination, the imagination to see what is truly there, for it is here, on our at this grand smallness that we begin to see the beauty of it all. This is where worship begins in the humility of wonder. Life is meant to be lived large, large in the amazingness of humanity not behind some petty conversation, not behind a computer screen where you have all the knowledge, not behind all of our opinions on things that may not matter, but to be filled with the Spirit so that we can use God's imagination to see the world. Let's pray. Loving and awesome God, thank you for the opportunity to receive the Spirit. Thank you for the opportunity to see people as you created them, to see nature as you created, to live in a world that you made. God, help us to be humble. Humble enough to put down the things that we think we all know. To, to make more important you instead of knowledge. Not that that knowledge can't back you up, but that sometimes we need to put that aside so that we can feel your presence to grow our knowledge in the right direction. Be with us and guide us. Talk to us and open our ears so that we may listen. In Jesus' name, amen.